Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations located to the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Advertising, which is zero land. I originally got that license in Connecticut, which is one land, but what I'd like to talk about here is the basic dipole antenna and how you can tweak it to make it do its best job. The basic antenna comprises two equal legs one quarter of a wavelength long electrically insulators and supporting cord or more wire going to whatever supports you may have. The ideal situation the antenna should be level the earth under it should be level and the height above the ground should be at least a quarter of a wavelength and preferably more than that. Here's your surface. A ballon coil is an important part of any good dipole antenna. 52 ohm coaxial cable, the lowest loss type you can get the shortest length of feed line you can get. It's a good idea to run that thing at least a quarter of a wavelength so that it's 90 degrees away from the axis of the antenna. And then you can just hook that thing right into your ham radio. You don't need a transmatch or anything like that. The formula for a half wave dipole, that's the overall length of this entire thing here, electrically in the HF ham bands you can find that length in feet by dividing 467 by the frequency in megahertz. <clears throat> so at 7 megahertz, that's somewhere on the order of 66 feet or 67 feet, something like that. Uh, you choose the frequency that you want as your center frequency, and then you trim the antenna for that. But it's never going to turn out exact. There's always going to be factors that enter in that change the situation for some reason or another. So if you have an SWR meter and you're really uptight about getting your SWR minimum at the frequency of choice, which by the way would be expected to be about 1.4 to 1, 1 1.4 to 1, because this is a 73 ohm impedance right here purely resistive 52 ohm coax we can go ahead and divide and let's find out 73 ohms divided by 52 ohms you'd expect it to be about 1.4 not 1 to 1 uh, if you are neurotic about it being 1 to 1 you're kind of out of luck unless you want to run these elements down into a configuration called an inverted V and if you make the apex angle of that inverted V just right, you will get a 52 ohm impedance there. But 1.4 to 1 SWR will not increase the loss of your system uh, appreciably worth bothering about. Well under 1 dB of additional loss in your coax when you do that. So this is your basic antenna. But things can upset this so that you're probably going to have to make the antenna a little longer or shorter. So I'd start out with a length just a little bit longer than this and then trim it until you get the length that you want. It depends on the type of earth underneath your antenna. That's one factor that affects your tweak. Another factor is whether or not the ground is level. If the ground is not level, then one side of the antenna is going to be closer to the ground than the other, and that's not only going to change the characteristic um, or change the impedance at the feed point but it's going to upset the balance of the antenna and that's not such a good thing you want to try and avoid that if you can you might actually do better to slope your antenna then so it's parallel to the surface in its vicinity other things buildings nearby obstructions things that affect one side of the antenna more than the other or even the whole antenna can change the SWR at your feed point but not by much you want to get that thing up in the clear 
You want to make it out of good, strong, preferably stranded wire, not solid, but stranded copper wire. And the reason why is that stranded wire is less likely to stretch under stress than solid copper. If you do have to use solid copper, use hard drawn copper or copper clad steel which is a real bear to work with if you've ever done that you know what I'm talking about there. So this is the basic configuration for an antenna that's well over a hundred years old and it's proven itself time and time again as a cheap and simple ham radio option for getting on the HF bands as soon as you possibly can. Stangibalisco W1GV saying 73 for now and so long.